Good evening and welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. I welcome you to join into our program this evening and before then, I would like to invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this new year and we thank you for your great faithfulness, Father, that you have shown to us all throughout 2019. Perhaps, God, in 2019, there were things that happened to our lives, Lord, in our lives that were perhaps tough that we could not understand but we pray father as we enter into 2020 that our lives lord will continue to be led by your spirit and that we will every day be more sensitive to listen to your words and your voice thank you jesus in your name we pray amen well happy new year everyone i'm so happy to be able to share the word of the lord this evening and this evening, the title of the sermon is Hearing God's Voice. Let's open together the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 7, all the way to 19. Let's read it together. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Take care, brothers, lest there be any of you an evil, in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. For who were those who hurt and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he pro provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who were disobedient. So, we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. My brothers, my sisters, this year, let us wholeheartedly believe in the Lord Jesus. Let us wholeheartedly believe in His promises, not just half and half. Don't just believe in the Lord when things are good and start to go away from the Lord and not believe Him when things are going tough. As the saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. This year, in 2020, let us get going. Let's keep going every day, one step at a time. The life of a Christian was never meant to be a life where we just relax and we have no problem at all. It's not like that. The Bible says that we have to fight the good fight of faith that we have to do so one day at a time. Anytime the Bible repeats something twice, especially in the same chapter or even more, something that is repeated perhaps more than one time in the same chapter, it means it is very important. In this case, we have seen that from verses 7 all the way to 19 of chapter 3 of the book of Hebrews, it is said that today, if you hear his words, do not harden your hearts. As in the rebellion, many of God's people, they died in the wilderness because of unbelief. If they were truly God's, God's sons and daughters who wholeheartedly would trust in the Lord, then they would not have rebelled. Let it be that in your lives and in our lives, that this year, will be a year where we become more obedient to God. That when we hear His voice, 
we will not harden our hearts. Forty years is a long time, but did you know that the Israelites wasn't supposed to be there going around and around in the desert for 40 years? The trip should have taken much, much quicker, but because of unbelief, because of the fact that they hardened their hearts. They had to be going around and around for 40 long years. Let it be that this year we wouldn't just go around and around just because of unbelief or because of rebellion. Rebellion can take form in many different ways. If we hear of a, a child, a teenager, or it doesn't have to be a teenager, it could be an older person too, who rebelled towards their uh, parents, sometimes we know that the person just, they refuse to listen, they refuse to take an advice, or it could be the fact that we know that we are supposed to do something which is the right thing to do, but we don't do it. We just refuse to do so. Now, my brothers and my sisters, how do we know which one is God's voice? How do we know if what we are hearing is not just voices, random voices, but it's really the voice from the Lord? How do we know, my brothers and my sisters, that it is truly God and it's not just our feelings? Well, we're going to take a look at this. One, God can speak through His words, the Bible. When we read the Bible, the book of John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If people are saying that, hey, the universe came into being because of a Big Bang, or because there's something, a force somewhere out there that had started it, do you know that the force is basically, it was created or pushed by someone, or someone had orchestrated it, and even if there was some sort of a quote-unquote Big Bang, did you know that something, a higher power or the highest power that is, must be the one who's orchestrating this whole thing? And we know that that, that is God. God was the one who put the word together. The world came into being because the Lord spoke his words and the world came into existence. Why is the word of the Lord powerful? It is powerful because it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of heart. Therefore, if we read the word of the Lord, we read the Bible, we are not only close to the Lord, but also we will be able to know the intentions and the thoughts that we are supposed to know. We would know which decision we should take and which one we should avoid. We will know what it is that we should do we will have an understanding beyond what our own mind can comprehend. That is the favor of the Lord. Second, God can speak through our spiritual leaders. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 20, we learn the story of a king by the name of Hezekiah. At the time, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said in verse 1, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die. You shall not recover. The message, the voice of the Lord, was passed on to the king through Isaiah. But if we read on the story, we know that Hezekiah basically cried out to the Lord. And because of the good deeds that he has done in the past, the fact that he was always faithful to the Lord. The Lord God was merciful to give him 15 extra years. And how did Hezekiah the king knew about that? Because the word of the Lord, the voice from the Lord was passed, was basically brought to the king through his prophet Isaiah. 
in the book of Proverbs. We know it was written by a guy by the name of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 9, 8 and 9. It says this, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful, graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. My brothers and my sisters, when we come to the Lord and when we humble ourselves, before him to be molded to be made into the person that God wants us to be the term father and mother here it doesn't just stop at our physical or biological mother and father but also our spiritual mother and father it could be your pastor or the pastor's wife the moksanim and the samonim at church it could be also the elders the changronims or it could be the gypsanims they could be that spiritual father and mother, spiritual leader in your life. But you yourself can be a spiritual leader to somebody else. And how could that happen? Well, you have to be willing to be humble and to be molded, to be made into the person that God wants you to be. In the book of Psalm, chapter 90, verse 12, it says, So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom how would the Lord teach us through his voice how can we hear God's voice through the Bible that we read through the spiritual leaders but also the third thing never forget that God can speak directly to us first we knew that the story of King Solomon the Lord God appeared to him at Gibeon in a dream and we know that in the story of John, the disciple of Jesus Christ, when he was exiled in an island called Patmos, there he was a prisoner. But did you know that he was still a free person? He was actually freer than most people. Why is that? Because the Lord Jesus Christ appeared and showed himself in the island of Patmos to John. And even greater than that is the fact that Though he was imprisoned, exiled, he never felt alone because he knew. He knew that the Lord Jesus Christ, his beloved father, God, his old teacher, his rabbi before, was always there with him. Listening to the word, the revelation of the Lord, writing him down, was what the apostle or the disciple of Jesus, John, did. You can be like John. Perhaps you are in a situation that is tough. Perhaps right now you are in a place that's it's not easy to be in. But when you find God, seek God in the midst of your difficulties, know that God can speak to you and God can speak through you. The midst of your tough times, in the midst of it, you can receive blessings. You can receive freedom from the Lord. If we read on in the book of 2 Kings chapter 20, the story of King Hezekiah, how after he wept bitterly, has, the King Hezekiah heard the good news that his life was going to be extended for an extra 15 years. And with that, King Hezekiah had said in verse 8, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, that I shall go up to the house of the Lord on the third day? And Isaiah said, Notice that the Lord didn't directly speak to, Isaiah, to um, Hezekiah, but the Lord spoke through Isaiah to Hezekiah it said this this shall be the sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do the thing that he has promised shall the shadow go forward 10 steps or go back 10 steps verse 10 and Hezekiah answered it is an easy thing for the shadow to lengthen 10 steps rather let the shadow go back 10 steps 
And Isaiah the prophet called to the Lord, and he brought the shadow back ten steps, by which it had gone down on the step of Ahaz. My brothers, my sisters, let us be more obedient to the Lord. Be obedient to your spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers, spiritual brothers and sisters, to the people that you respect. When you do that, know that the Lord shall do for you not only the things that you cannot do on your own, but the Lord will guide your lives, will protect you from the evil things that are going on in this world. When you do that, you have peace, joy that is beyond what your own self can accomplish. Hearing God's voice. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Perhaps the Lord is telling you today to forgive somebody, to call someone, to reach out to someone, to do something you haven't done in a long time, or to stop doing something. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Three things. And the Lord can definitely speak to us through many other ways, but three things that we've learned today, at the very least, are that God can speak to us through His words, the Bible. God can speak to us through our spiritual leaders. And three, God can speak directly to us. Amen. Today, if you've heard the word of the Lord, and you've never accepted the Lord Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to welcome you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, my brothers and my sisters, know that your sins have been forgiven because the Bible says if you believe in your heart, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. There's a promise of eternal life that the Lord has given to those who believe in Him. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Lastly, I'd like to pray for everyone else. Let's pray together. Father God, I pray for all the other listeners, Lord, those who are watching, who are faithfully watching week after week. May you bless their lives, Father. May you strengthen them in terms of needs, Father. If there's anyone who's sick, I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Lord God, if there's anyone who's in need of help, may you help them out, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord, we humble ourselves before you. We have studied your words, and we know, Lord, what we have learned today, Father, will be something, Lord, that we can put into practice so that your name will continue to be glorified in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. See you next time.